you're watching the free version of this tutorial. Upgrade to premium for all footage and project and exclusive content. Exercise 12 is all about the camera solve in Mocha Pro. And we're gonna use the camera solve to take our 2D planar tracking data and turn that into a 3D camera solve. And there are different types of camera motion that we can track and do a 3D camera solve on. So we're gonna have a look at our first type, which is a pan, tilt, and zoom. So if we take a look at this shot now, you can see that this was mounted on a tripod. So we've got a nodal camera movement. So it's a camera movement that's in one fixed place, as opposed to a camera move where the camera is actually moving through physical space. This camera position is static and it's just panning, tilting, or zooming. In this case, there's no zoom, but there is a big pan. And when we're tracking for the regular planar tracks, what we do is we'll find something that is nice and coplanar like this, and we'll track that area in, and we get the tracking data, which we can then use to do all of our other stuff. Let's just get rid of that, because when we're tracking for a pan, tilt, and zoom camera, what we're after is looking for the overall movement in, in the camera, rather than the individual planes, an idea of what exactly what's going on in the shot. So I'm gonna create a nice big shape here. And I'm purposely not worrying about our stuff not being coplanar. Let's turn on perspective on this. Because we've got quite a hefty pan, we're gonna get quite a hefty perspective shift. And let's turn on the layer mask there a little bit, just so we can see what we're tracking through. Put that into a light green. And I'm gonna turn my grid on as well, just so we get an idea of what the tracking data is gonna be looking like. And let's just track that forwards. You'll see that we get a good idea of what the pan is doing. Now I'm gonna stop that there for a second. So we've got quite a, uh, quite a big pan happening here. That's all looking absolutely fine. And even though we haven't finished our track, I'm gonna to come to the camera solve module and we're gonna have a little look through this first. Now, the module itself is actually pretty straightforward. We've got a choice of picking what type of camera movement we have. So is it a pan, tilt, or zoom? Is it small parallax change or large parallax change? We're gonna look at these in the next exercise. Or do we just want Mocha to take a, a guess at what the movement is? In this case, we know it's a pan, tilt, and zoom. And let's hop along to our focal length. Now we've got smaller than 35 mil, 35 to 70 mil, or greater than 70 mil. So put it simply, are we working with a wide angle lens, a longer telephoto lens, or something that's just in the middle? This doesn't look like a wide angle lens to me. There's not the same sort of distortion we'd expect. It's definitely not a telephoto lens, so it's going to be something in the middle. Is our shot zooming? No, it's not. If it was zooming between different focal lengths, we can select multiple focal lengths here as well as the zooming. But let's just turn that off. Great, so now we've got that. Let's hit solve. And Merkle will go along and give us a, a good estimation of how confident it is it's got the solve right. 93%. It's not particularly great, but it should be, should be all right. Just have a little look. We'll tweak this in a moment. And I'm gonna export out that camera data. And when we're taking out the camera data, we can take it either to After Effects, 3D Motion, or FBX, to use in 3D applications, or FBX for Nuke, or we can take it out as a hit film composite shot. In this case, we're gonna take it out as After Effects Motion Data, and we have the same options of saving or copy to the clipboard. Pretty much whenever we're working with After Effects, we can just copy that to the clipboard. Let's just save that, exit, and have a look at our shot here. Now, once we've got the data in the clipboard, I can just go to edit, come down to the bottom now, and go to paste Mocha camera. That will have a think, and it will then give us our camera layer, and it'll give us nulls for all of the layers that we have exported. And these nulls correspond to the corners of the surface and one center point. Let's get rid of those ones that we don't need. 
just by deleting them. Lovely. So say if we wanted to put a first bit of text in here. There we go, nothing too crazy there. And let's turn that text into a 3D layer. Find the position of our null. Copy that with Control or Command C and paste that with Control or Command V. And now it should be sitting there in 3D space. We can happily rotate it and turn off the keyframes on position if we're going to change these because it's not, we don't really want it moving. And we can also happily change the position in X and Y without mucking up its relationship to the camera. There we go. So that looks all right as far as it goes. It just stops very quickly. And the reason it stops very quickly is because we only tracked in the first 50 frames. So let's come and track everything, shall we? We'll rename this one track one. I'll turn off the processing on that because we're fine there. Now this is quite a large pan. And the general rule of thumb is that whenever a pan goes beyond about 60 degrees, we need to add multiple shapes in here for Mocha to get the best results. So I'm going to finish this layer around about here. Remember how we set the out point on our layer? We just go over to the layer properties, set out point. Excellent. And now let's make another shape. So I'm going to take us back about 10 frames and make another shape here. Again, quite a big one. Color code this. So we can see the difference. And we'll set the in point on our layer properties, come to our track parameters, and turn on perspective on this too. Take a look at the grid as we track that forwards. Okay, cool. Now this is a large pan. So I'm going to suggest that we get another track in here as well. So select a new X spline layer, have a bit of crossover, nice and large one more time. Call this one track two, and call this one track three. Set the endpoint on track three, turn perspective on track three, and we'll track this through another 10 frames. So we'll get to about frame 70, 71. Great, and we will turn the out point on on track two. So now we're left with track three. Let's see how far this can get us. Now, when we're looking for areas to track, we do want to avoid areas where there's motion in there because that will throw off the track itself. So having non coplanar stuff in is absolutely fine. Having stuff in that moves around because then we're not tracking the movement of the camera, we're tracking the movement of things within the camera as well. Right, so now that has been tracked through. Let's come back into our camera solve and select all the tracks that we want to use, which is all of them. I'll turn, so let's just turn the grid off for a second so we're not quite as messy in here. And nothing else has changed about our type of camera or the focal length. Let's hit solve one more time. That goes off and solves it. Solve quality is dipped down a bit to 85, so we do have to take care of the results of this, um, make sure that, that nothing's floating and drifting away. But let's see what we can get. So export camera data again. Take it out as After Effects, copy to the clipboard. One thing to note on the solve quality, if that does dip much lower, we will get a warning saying one or more of our tracks is not particularly great and might not be consistent with the camera movement. So let's exit this, delete our old camera and null, and come to Edit, Paste, Mocha Camera. And this now brings us in nulls for everything. Just see if any of our null points look like they're flying away or floating out of place. It all seems pretty consistent to me. Okay, well, let's make sure that that's going to work. Let's take our new position on our track one center. Copy that. Come to our OK text. Paste that new value in there. Get rid of the keyframe. So we can just move that down. 
and a longer smidge. And that seems to be working fine. Uh, let's uh, choose another one of these track points. What we'll do now is just sort of cull and delete some of the ones that we don't need. We'll keep the track to bottom right and we'll get rid of everything apart from track three center. There we go. Let's duplicate our mocha text. Copy the new position in there. Turn off the keyframe. Duplicate the text. Copy the mocha position. Get rid of that keyframe as well. And have a little look. Yeah, mocha, mocha, mocha. So this is cool when we need to apply an effect or a patch or a text to a particular surface that we can't normally track using the planar tracker. So that's how we deal with a shot that has pan, tilt and zoom in it. In the next exercise, we're going to be looking at a moving camera where there is parallax movement in the camera. So the camera has been moving around and there is parallax changes going on in our shot. And that will be in exercise 13.